Charlie, dear boy. A second episode so soon after the first? Is this setting the tone of things to come? Well, of course. Of course. <laughs> I'm far more professional with the R6 than I was with the Triumph. Um, yeah, and I've also got to remember not to touch my face, because I'm doing a lot of that. I don't like this filming stuff, but I touch my face a lot. Really? Anything, really? Yeah, um, well, when you say that, can you just do it and smile at the same time? Don't forget. There you go. That's yes, I'm not very smiley. I do apologise. That's okay. I think you're smiley. Um, right, so then, since our last epic install... Come on then. He's like that dad in the office, and he just turns around and stares at the camera. <laughs> that was definitely two fingers, wasn't it? Yeah. No, it was just, How much Ducati uh, clothing have you actually got? Yeah, you keep going on about my Ducati stuff. I'm starting to think you're a bit jealous. Could be. <laughs> Though I've got a nice fast bikes one, which are available, by the way. Oh, really? I don't have Big one. Big smile. Big right. smile. <laughs> I don't have one, funny enough. Anyway, right, so since we last spoke, we spoke about the suspension and how good the front is, but how the back is a little bit bouncy. It's a bit bouncy, um, and it's actually something that a lot of people have said about the R6, so it's not just me <coughs> being fat. Um, in regard to the major sort of problems that people have had with the R6, yes, suspension has been a primary, which is why I've addressed it straight away. I was going to say, and you haven't messed about, you have gone whole hog. No, 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 no. Well, as there was snow on the ground, it was a good time to actually take this, uh, take the bike up to Nitron, um, up in Whitney near Oxfordshire, in their factory, and basically they've sorted me right out. It's been awesome, so have a look. Thank you, thank you. So what you can see here is the Nitron Blue Shark. Mm -hmm. um, basically I left the bike with them for a couple of days and um, it came back cleaner, which was nice. Um, but also with, um, yeah, with this a beautiful new Nitron, uh, Nitron Shock with, uh, with the piggyback too, which so far, don't ask me too much about it because I've probably done about four miles since. Mm -hmm. um, just because of the atrocious conditions, but you can just tell straight away it's so much firmer than the original. So it's been um, it's been a really really good addition, and I just can't wait to play with it. Not only that, it will also have a far greater range of adjustment. It will, it will. Um, and while it was there, um, basically they've got a new cartridge kit as well, mm -hmm. which they've just developed for the R6. Mm -hmm. Now. Never look a gift horse in the mouth. They offered to actually fit those two, and although it wouldn't be the first thing I would do, because the front end of the R6, which mirrors that of the R1, is extremely good, um, you might as well give it a go. So you can see here. Um, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, hold, hold your horses. Did you do any filming up at Nitron? I did. Well, let's have a look at that first. Okay. I mean, was it an easy bike to work on? Um, I mean, not too bad, really. Um, I mean, the same with most sort of sports bikes. It's pretty tight kind of around the, the rear of it. You know, you have to take sort of fairings off. Um, you know, there's sort of little sort of nifty bits to get to. Um, but I mean, typically not too bad, really. Um, obviously, the forks are quite easy. So, mm -hmm. yeah, overall, not a bad bike to work on, really. And have you worked on the R6s before? Um, yes, the last generation of them is uh, a bit of a pig. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, it's a real mission to get that one apart. But yeah, this one seems to be quite a lot easier. I don't know if they've actually taken it into consideration when designing it. I shouldn't think so. But yeah, much better to work on. Cool. Okay, well, Bob. So I brought this in because the the rear is famously soft. The front end has been celebrated. Mm -hmm. um, but can you just take us through exactly what you've done and just show me um, the various. Uh, the, the different shocks and yeah okay so we'll start on the front um, so obviously when the bike comes in um, it's road tested first mm -hmm. so that'll give us an idea of like how everything feels um, what needs doing if anything needs doing um, any adjustments that we can obviously make so we'll take that out for a road test bring it back in stick it up on the stand drop the forks out um, we can then take the original cartridges out right um, this is after it's all been dynoed and everything so we can feel it in real terms um, and then actually see what the graph looks like on the computer um, so you can work with that sort of kind of theoretically. Okay. Um, so yeah, forks out, original cartridges out um, and then we can start to develop our own kit based on the measurements of what the OEM unit is like. 
So, but the original forks and cartridges that were were in this were vastly improved from the last. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's, I, I'm sure this. I think it's the R1 forks that are actually in this. Right. Okay. Um, I haven't checked the graph because it was Scott who was doing um, mm -hmm. the valving for the forks. Um, but as far as I'm aware, it's either R1 forks in it or very similar. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. So what was next then? Um, so yeah, once we've got everything dynoed, um, a bit of spec obviously, you do all the drawings um, mm -hmm. to make sure everything sort of fits and works properly. Um, it gets all put back together um, and then we can road test it. Yeah. Um, obviously after being dynoed and everything. So, yeah. Cool, okay. So, obviously looking at the top of the, the forks here, I've got um, I've got the, these different areas to, to adjust, so what am I doing with those? Okay, right, so you've got three adjusters on here, so um, if I just grab the tools so yeah, and show cool. you. This is a great tool, this is a brilliant tool. Yeah, it's tool. a nifty Love little it. tool this is. It's, it's got nitron cool. on it as well. Yeah, pretty swish. <laughs> um, so it's just your little hex tool here, so you can just use this to click it, obviously, as you've seen. So you've got rebound on the right, um, yeah. compression on the left. So we send them out um, with a sort of desired setting that's typically kind of your mid-range. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it depends on how it feels, um, but I mean, we always encourage people to have a little bit of play around because every ride is different. Um, so yeah, you've just got your tool here, so you rebound on the right. What this is going to do, um, in simple terms, the way this is going to sort of affect the bike is as you're letting off the brakes under sort of heavy braking, mm -hmm. um, the quicker the rebound is, the faster that's going to come back up when you let off the brakes. Yeah. Um, some people obviously like that kind of feeling, you know, it sort of brings the bike back up, right? So you're not going to be sort of nose down out of the corner. Right. Um, but I mean, you know, again, it's completely personal preference. Um, obviously, slowing the rebound down, what that's going to do is it's just going to sort of, as you compress on the forks, it's going to stop it from sort of bouncing back up. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to make it feel a lot more sort of controlled. Um, but again, you know, obviously if you have that too stiff or too slow, um, it's going to leave you sort of nose heavy. Yeah, got it, yeah. On your compression, again, simple terms, that's just going to be how stiff it feels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you wound that all the way off, um, you're not necessarily going to run the risk of sort of bottoming out, but it's going to be like, you know, a lot, more, a lot softer. Right. So, and then obviously vice versa when it's done. So this is a case for me taking out and playing with it in various different yeah, environments. Yeah, absolutely. The first thing that I'd say is to have a play around with your rebound and see how that sort of feels. Because um, yeah. typically, you know, you might want the front to be a little bit more live and off the brakes. Sure. Uh, personally, I like it to sort of like be a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get quite a lot of um, typically the MT09 series um, mm -hmm. and kind of all of the MT shocks generally. Um, the forks aren't really damped very well at all when you get a lot of sort of bounce back mm -hmm. coming off the brakes. Um, so something like that, you're really going to feel the difference. Brilliant, okay. Um, your third final adjustment is preload. So you've just got hex on top of here. So mm -hmm. that's just going to raise and lower your ride height. Right, okay. Excellent, so I can alter the ride height. Yeah, specific yeah. we've got a bump travel indicator down here as well. <coughs> Um, so you can use this as kind of a gauge, um, a little bit, it's kind of in between uh, ride height and compression damping, yeah. so the more compression you use, um, the less this is going to, you know, the less travel of the forks you're going to use. Um, and obviously you want to be able to use as much of the forks as possible to get the optimum, you know, performance out of them. Sure. Cool, okay, so I can gauge that as I, uh, as I go. Yeah, yeah. It's always good to take it to a suspension specialist to get everything set up as well. So in regards to your ride height, the mm -hmm. arm is typically going for around sort of 35 to sort of 42 mil rider sag on the front. Um, yeah. But I mean, it's kind of more personal preference and it's more of a tuning variable than anything. Well, I, I will be taking this up to uh, to James up at JHS for um, a static setup. Yeah, stage, cool. so. I'm sure you'll be very impressed that I've got uh, all the new suspension. Yeah, well, we've got a good relationship with JHS, so I'm sure they're looking forward to getting their hands on it. Yeah, as an official dealer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then that moves us over to the rear. Yeah, and that's a beautiful looking thing. Yeah, it's a good looking piece of kit, isn't it? Uh, this one isn't quite the top of the range, though, is it? No, so this is our R3 model. Um, next up from this is a Race Pro, so it's a 46mm unit as opposed to the 40mm you've got installed. Got you, okay. 
Um, the main difference being um, obviously a larger oil volume, mm -hmm. um, which means that you know more oil, which is going to take longer to heat up, so you've got more resistance to fade. Right. Um, it does have a larger piston in it as well, um, so you have a higher flow rate, so we can sort of, you know, it, it works with the damping accordingly. Got you. Um, um, and the gaps within that is in the piggyback, isn't it? Yeah. That's yeah. where the gap, whereas in the so old shock, it was all in together, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. So okay. um, a lot of uh, units, I mean, most of the sort of race bikes and stuff, or, you know, sports bikes, they do have piggyback units that are similar to this, so they have a yeah. separate sort of reservoir for it. Um, but on our series, we've got uh, three different units. Um, before you go up to the race pro, so you've got your R1 unit, mm -hmm. which is very similar to this, but it just doesn't have the external reservoir, like you can see here. Yeah. So your internal gas volume would be actually inside the monotube here. Right. Um, so it's a smaller gas volume, but it's still separated from the oil and the use of internal floating piston. Um, on this as well, You've got your extra two adjusters here, so yeah. you've got your compression, low speed and high speed, mm -hmm. which you'd have on the, the uh, high performance race pro unit. Mm -hmm. um, so all the adjusters are exactly the same, but obviously it's a larger diameter unit with more oil and a larger piston. Got you, okay. So that's my main adjuster here. Yeah, yeah, so I mean typically you're gonna find, again, sort of in real terms, um, what you're gonna find is this, uh, your high speed adjuster unit here. Um, that's what's going to make the most kind of profound effect over your compression. Yeah. So if you want to obviously stiffen the unit up, um, you're going to go with your com uh, high speed compression first. Low speed compression is more sort of fine kind of tuning. Yeah. Um, so if you imagine, you know, squat coming out of a corner, something like that, um, you're going to be able to kind of tune around that. And your final adjustment there is on the bottom down here. It's a bit tight to get to, but you can't get to about just under here. You might not be able to see it with the camera, but that's where your rebound adjustment is. Uh, just yeah, under there. Hey, get on there, Martin. All right. Yeah, bear with us. <laughs> there you go. These are a bit of a pain to get to on a lot of bikes, unfortunately. Um, we do have a different unit where we can use a side adjuster for it. Yeah. Um, where you can use a tool that's very similar to this uh, to get sort of in the frame. Um, you get on sort of Ducatis and things like that where they've got a little hole in the swing arm so you can get to a tool. Um, but yeah, this we use a thumb adjuster, which you know, for 99% of sort of applications, it's absolutely fine. It's just sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get to, and I wouldn't really recommend adjusting it when the bike's like, you know, fresh off the track because you know no. you've got a lot of exhaust down here. Um, yeah. But that's you're going to feel the most difference from adjusting this. So right. some people like the back end of the bike to be quite lively. Some people like it to be a little bit slower. Okay. And it's that adjustment that's going to do that. It's going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what that's going to do is, much like on the front, that's going to control uh, how quickly the bike rebounds mm -hmm. um, and from compression. So what okay. that's going to feel like is, if you imagine you sort of tip into a corner, um, if you were to have that sort of fully open, it's fastest setting, it's going to, the back's going to sort of move around quite a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you get motocross riders who kind of, you know, they like a little bit more movement over the back end. Um, whereas other people like it to be a lot more sort of planted, a lot slower, but mm -hmm. I mean, again, completely down to feel and have a play around with it and see how you get on. Perfect. So looking after these, uh, looking after the, the cartridges and the new shock, etc. Um, what's the best way of maintaining it in regard to, well, you can see the weather outside, what it's like, yeah. the snow, etc. <laughs> yeah. I was going to ride this yeah. bag, hence wearing my yeah. warms, but I'm not, I'm just not going to be able to get it out yeah, without so spinning it in um, on this estate, so I'll come back with a van. But I'm just worried about the the amount of salt, etc. that's going yeah. to get in. Uh, am I, mean, I rinsing this every time I come back in? Um, I mean, all of the units, uh, all the components are hard anodised, so right. they should be more than capable of putting up with the British weather. I mean, obviously we're a British manufacturer, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, the salt and the fact that you get on the roads is... It's, it's paramount and it's, it's consideration you know, straight away. <laughs> we're more yeah, than course. aware of what the roads are like in this yeah. country. So yeah, I mean, no, you shouldn't have any issues with anything like that at all. It looks brilliant. It looks absolutely beautiful. I'm just gutted I can't ride it now. But uh, hopefully we'll have it for a long time. So yeah. All good. Well, Ollie, that's brilliant. Thank you very much, mate. That's, um, it looks absolutely awesome. No problem at all. All good, Mark? All good. So. Um, that was the bike at Nitro, and that was the guys talking me through everything, what it did, etc. 
Um, now, I'm yet to play with it, but as you can see here in the forks, you've got uh, both your adjusters, you've got rebound here, you've got your compression here, and they gave me this wicked tool, which I'm going to get. And I'm so excited by this. It's an Allen key, but look, it's got nitro written on it. That makes, that makes all the difference. That's so cool. <laughs> yeah. And look, it fits and everything just goes in there. Oh, brilliant. But, joking aside, the key thing with this is that every click and every turn that you make um, will have a very pronounced difference, which they have described to me here. So, if you can see this properly, this paperwork, I wouldn't concentrate just on that because this is all the stuff. I feel like I'm back at school. I've got to go through looking at the dynamics of this suspension. Um, and so I'll put more about this in the magazine. Oh, good, but, good. But basically what it goes to show by dynoing this, the suspension is just how good this setup is mm -hmm. and can be and diverse for each and every different style of riding you're going to do. Which, once it gets a bit nicer out there, I will be doing. Um, so, uh, there, there's a lot more play. Uh, a, lot more, a lot more playing to do with, um, with this suspension setup from Nitron. Fantastic. And I'll take it the front felt, uh, likewise, a, a tad firmer as well. Uh, look, I've got to be honest, the front, as I've said, was always already pretty sharp. Um, I, yes, it is sharper, but it's the difference in regard to your ass being quite stuck to the road because you've got a much better shot on the back um, than seeing an immediate difference with the front. Mm -hmm. But we need a lot more play time. Mm -hmm. it, this has only done a thousand miles and it's done a thousand miles on diesel strewn, snow on the side of the road, crappy roads. Mm. So. I don't expect masses of information from me yet, mm -hmm. because to put a setup like this on your bike, it is going to cost you in excess mm -hmm. of a grand. So let's look at, in, look at it in more detail a bit later. Absolutely, and I fully intend to take this out the very first dry day we get to give it a go. Hey, Jimson. <laughs> Thanks. So anyway, right. So speaking of sticking to the road, um, you also went off to Phoenix, didn't you, to do some stuff? So let's have a look at what you did there before we come.